Looking at this curriculum, it's kind of a little bit deceiving. If you do the Middle Ages or the Renaissance, that whole, that book. In this video, I'm gonna share with you what worked and what didn't work for our current homeschool year. I currently am homeschooling a third grader, fifth grader, and seventh grader. Those are the ones that I'm gonna talk about right now. I also have a younger daughter with special needs. We'll talk about that in another video. History. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I love Truth Quest. And this year we did Truth Quest with the Middle Ages. Now, I love Truth Quest for so many reasons. The pros, it comes from a biblical worldview. Two, it's really, really flexible. Three, it, it's so, it's just so flexible. <laughs> it is, it's so flexible and you have choices, you have spines that you can find that you can actually, you know, for example, Story of the World is a very, very popular history curriculum. Well, Story of the World is one of the spines that they recommend. So you can purchase the Story of the World and you're going through Story of the World, but you're using Truth Quest as like a cover to it because Truth Quest is going to interpret everything biblically. Plus, Truth Quest is going to also start giving you other books that you can use to supplement Story of the World. Now, if you wanted to, you could use the packet of worksheets that Story with the World, Story with the World, Story of the World provides, or you could use the packet of worksheets that Truth Quest provides. Either or. Do you see how flexible it gets? I feel like Truth Quest is a cover because you're looking at things from a biblical worldview and the little couple of paragraphs that she gives as she enters into each little section that you go through, she's looking at it from a biblical lens. You're asking yourself two questions, which are the big two beliefs, who is God and who is man. And you're looking at these things in history and, and you're gonna start to see patterns. Now, the, the cons for Truth Quest, and there are cons, <laughs> unfortunately, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of teacher heavy work because you have to make some, you have to make decisions. Like, are you going to do this worksheet? Are you going to read this book? So I'll show you just really super quick. But as you can see, they give you lots of options of books that you could get, including some of the spines that they recommend. You don't have to read all those books. You have to decide which ones you want to use. Same with the spines. They actually give you several spines to choose from. Story of the World, Volume 2 and 3. Story of 13 Colonies. Famous Men of the Renaissance and Reformation. Island Story by H.E. Marshall, which, by the way, is amazing, that book. If you do the Middle Ages or the Renaissance, that, whole, that book, Island Story, just like somehow write that down right now. It is so good, it is so good. Moving on, Story of the Renaissance and Reformation, Light and Glory, and then so, Story of Liberty, How Shall We Then Live, and they put the grade levels next to them. You can't get all those books. You have to pick and choose which ones you wanna get. Another con to Truth Quest is that not all of these books are available to you if you plan on getting them from the library. Um, you have to plan in advance, too, because a lot of these books will also be unreserved. So that's kind of the, the con, uh, but it is also another pro, is that you're getting into good quality, real living books, because she has a very Charlotte Mason type philosophy, the lady who wrote Truth Quest. Would I say Truth Quest works for us? Yeah? And no, I do realize that after, actually we're gonna go into Renaissance and Reformation next year because I want to kind of finish this out, but because of the age of my kids, I am looking at some other things to do. I'm looking at Not Grass, I'm looking at BJU, if you have any thoughts, because this is mainly for the high schooler, actually. Now for my daughter, because we never did American history with her, we did Master Books, American Story. This is where I get to be honest. This is where I get to be like really honest. Um, it's very traditional, this book. It reminds me of when I was in school. Even though they do say they come from a very Charlotte Mason type philosophy, it feels very traditional. And it's very easy to just be like, here, read and then answer the question the questions and we'll do like a, a chart and a timeline. It's also very predictable, the curriculum, which in a sense is kind of good. 
I am not crazy about it personally. Maybe because I've been spoiled with Truth Quest. <laughs> I guess it's it's working for us, um, but I'm not crazy about it. I guess that's my answer. I don't know if she's retaining this information though. That's another thing that I'm also thinking. And another thing too is I feel like they're skipping a lot of things that I felt were very important in history and highlighting things that I felt weren't really that important. But then again, Truth Quest spoiled me. It really did. Oh my gosh, yes. Because you spent three years, three, well we spent four, <laughs> but three years on history and I mean we did so much. You know what, maybe I won't switch out of Truth Quest, I don't know. I don't know. It's such a good curriculum. Anyway, moving on, that's my thoughts on history. Another thing that I worked with my kids is the basics of critical thinking. Um, actually, you'll see that I ripped almost everything out of this book, so we finished it. Um, some of it was difficult. I feel like this is Critical Thinking Company, and this one's for fourth through ninth grade, and I did it with both of my boys. It's good, but you can't just hand this to your kid and walk away. You have to kind of coach them through this. It's a really, I would say, this is the basics, yeah. It's an introduction to critical thinking an introduction. On the same lines of the basis of critical thinking, we have been actually going through a series, we've been actually doing a group of us together, um, Dr. Jason Lyle, uh, he actually has a DVD series called Get Logical, and he has a book called Introduction to Logic, and we've actually been going through those, understanding logic from a biblical perspective, learning fallacies, learning why it's important not to use fallacies and how to recognize them. It's just been really good, um, and I highly recommend that eighth grade and up adulthood as well it's just really good you know what I have an interview with him where we talk about his logic curriculum so once I get that up I'll, I'll stick a link science let me go into science because I actually teach science at a homeschool co-op once a week science is, is my favorite <laughs> my favorite I put together two classes we've been doing forensic science from middle school and my oldest son actually both my fifth grader and my seventh grader are in that class and we have been using a website called it's a sci it's science spot.com and it's their forensics I'm gonna stick a link down below I've been using that to go through forensic science and it's been great it's a it's a great like I don't know it's not from a biblical perspective it's very general but it's very in-depth and it gathers resources from all over the internet It's a hundred percent free you can't go wrong there and it it's been really thorough if I feel like it needs a little bit more, sometimes I'll go on Google and search up, but that's been very rare. I think it's a very comprehensive science, forensic science course. Now there is, if you're interested in forensic science, I know the Master Books has one that just came out. I'm kind of sad because it came out a year after we did forensic science, but you know what? It is what it is. Forensic science is fun, especially for middle schoolers because it is getting them to investigate. So forensics is working. Now for the elementary, we're doing animal science. And so we started, it was a class that I'm teaching, we started doing amazing animals. Just going through all like the cool animals and what makes them unique and talking about the design and all the things. And But I started mixing a lot of different curriculum, pulling from a lot of different curriculums to really just teach that animal science. And um, I used mainly two. I will start with my favorite, always Apologia. I think if you have an elementary school kid, especially if they're interested in animal science, Apologia, you have no choice. <laughs> you, I don't think you have a choice. It is, uh, it is biblical based. But when it comes to science at an elementary school age, animal science, this is, you don't have a choice. We also pulled from another curriculum, which is from Master Books. And this one is applied engineering. So I started using some of these worksheets for my elementary school science class, which let me tell you right now, this says something up here on it. It says, oh look, seventh to ninth grade, call me crazy, my kids did who were in that class. I used it, um, <laughs> but I didn't, I haven't done it as intense as this teacher guide lays things out. They do come with a book called Made in Heaven and there's some really cool, fun experiments in here that we've been pulling from. This book, I've been reading this to the kids and there's some really good stories in here for 
Example, mantis shrimp eyes improve next wave of entertainment technology. Butterflies prevent counterfeit currency. So yeah, and there's some experiments that go with this. So it doesn't work for elementary school. Looking at this curriculum, it's kind of a little bit deceiving when I saw it. I was like, applied engineering, great, my kid wants to be an engineer. But what it actually means is study of God's design in nature. You're actually looking at all the different plants and animals and looking at how God designed it and seeing how it applies to the world and how we can mimic it to make machines and stuff like that. There's a lot of different, there's another book too, this one, it's Discovery Design. And this one's fun. They have, I mean, literally every page has a different gecko and adhesive tape. It says giraffe anti-gravity spacesuit. So you read about it, a short little blob, and then there's like three sentences or three questions. And you actually have to go to the internet to answer those questions. You're not gonna find them in this short little. It's a good book. It's a good supplementary book. I don't know if I would ever do this as a full curriculum because it does seem a little book work heavy. I feel like it would need more hands-on activities, but that's just my taste. And usually when I feel like I need a little more hands-on activities, I go to Pinterest and Google. Oh, we also have these books that I use for animal science. These are from Answers in Genesis. I don't know if they're in print anymore. I'm just gonna be honest. This is another one. I've had these for years. I love these books. This is great supplements too, and these have definitely, I mean, look at this. It's a quick little. I use this for like games. Games, and like for example, today, we picked, I randomly picked two animals, and they had to compare and contrast the two different animals based on this lovely picture and then what we read over here. So that was one activity we did. And I'll use this for little short projects where they'll read a passage and then have to present it to the class. And so anyway, it, these are great. These are great references, so. Another thing that we used this year was Homeschool Spanish Academy, which we used it for about a year and then we decided to take a break. And in the beginning, I loved it. I was seeing differences. It, and it got to the point because of our busy, busy schedule and because, just I think really because of our schedule, it was starting to not work for us. It was working for my daughter great. Actually, it was working amazing for her. I just had to be on top of her and make sure she was doing her homework. The boys were actually taking the class together. That was great for the first half of the year, and then all of a sudden the younger son just, he just, it, it, online schooling does not work for him. Let's just leave it at that. Nothing, nothing with Spanish Academy. It's just online schooling does not work for him. And he was starting to distract his brother. He was starting to play with the screen and mess with the background. And it's really difficult. It's almost like I have to sit there and stare at him to make sure that he's not doing all those crazy things online. Now, I am considering doing homeschool Spanish Academy now that my son, my older son, is looking at doing his foreign language credits. I'm gonna talk about that in a video when I start doing my eighth grade curriculum picks. But I will say homeschool Spanish Academy started working great for us. It's just, it's, a, it's not homeschool Spanish Academy's fault at all. It was just our schedule. And it was the boys were just, it's my, my middle one. It just doesn't, online schooling doesn't work for him. So we finished out the year and we called it quits after a year. And we picked up TalkBox Mom. And we did the first box. <laughs> And I, you know, I just, as much as I want to learn Spanish, it's not easy. <laughs> oh, and for our Bibles, we are using Not Consumed Ministries, which I love them. I really, really do. My daughter, I will be honest, I had to get her a different one because I felt like for her, it was just, I don't know, she was, she was struggling with Not Consumed Ministries, even though it was at her grade level. She just, I don't know, we just had to do something a little bit different. Her brain works differently. And the boys, it works with the boys. So it's a good little like wake up in the morning and think things through, get it done. And you know, God is in the forefront. We also do a Bible study separate during the day. So it's almost like not consumed. It's like a little bit of taste of the Bible in the morning. And then later in, later in the day, we get a little bit more in depth. And when we go in depth, um, I'm actually, you know, I'm just gonna do a video on how we do Bible 
that's it. But thank you guys for watching. Once again, don't forget to subscribe, click on the like button if this was great and helpful, and check out some of those videos that I mentioned through this video in the iCards and ending screen to get more in depth with some of the curriculum that I'm sharing with you today. So once again, thank you, and I will see you in our next video. Bye.